In this video, you'll take a deep dive into the import statement. So what forms can the import statement take? In its simplest form, it's like what you've already used in the previous video, import and then the module's name. In that particular case, the module contents are not directly accessible to the caller, so you need to use dot notation. The module creates a separate namespace. Let me show you what that looks like. Now you've practiced this already, but you can type import mod and that would import your module. Now the trick to that is the objects that you've imported are not in the same local namespace. They're not in the local symbol table. So if you were to type the letter A, that object isn't available. S isn't available, printy, any of those objects are not available. You would need to use dot notation beginning with the name of the module first. After adding the dot, now I can access A, or you could access S, or even printy, As a note, you can also import multiple modules at a time, simply including a comma in between the names of each. As an alternative, individual objects from the module can be imported, like this. From, and then the module's name, import, and then you would use the object's names. Or you can use several with commas in between them. The individual objects are directly accessible to the caller then. They're imported directly into the caller symbol table, meaning you don't have a separate namespace at that point. Let me show you what that looks like. I exited and restarted the REPL here. In the second example, you'd say from, and then the module's name, import, and then you would say, oh, I want, let's say S in printy. So now those have been imported into the local symbol table. S is actually available. And so is printy in the local namespace, not requiring you to use dot notation. There is a need to be careful though. If you were to create an object named A, and let's say A has a few text strings in a list, there's A. If you were to import A from your module, what happened to the existing local A? Well, it's been overwritten. And so this creates a collision, if you will, overriding the existing object. So there's a need to be careful with the namespaces here in simple generic names. Now it is also possible to import everything from a module at once. In that case, it would be from, and then the module's name, import, and then an asterisk sign. You probably have seen this before in a script or two, but this places all the names of the objects into the local symbol table. The only thing that won't be imported is anything that begins with an underscore keeping it private to the module itself. This isn't necessarily recommended. Unless you know all the names are not gonna conflict with or overwrite any existing names, you can run into some trouble. Now this will take all the named objects from the module into the local symbol table. So now, classy is there, printy, and the string object S. I'm gonna exit again. You can also import individual objects and then have them have an alternative name. That would look like this. From module, import whatever the object's name is, and then as what you'd like the object to be renamed as. And you can do this multiple times. So it's making it possible to place names directly into the local symbol table. Therefore, it could avoid conflicts with existing names. You still need to be careful with whatever you choose as alternative names. So in this example, say you have local variables that are named A, and another one named S, which is a string. Here's the two objects A and S. So if you were to import A and S from your module, it would write over these two. What you can do is say from mod import S and give it a new name. Maybe name it just string and A as a list. So again, you can use this comma to do multiple imports at once. So now A is still there and S is still there, but string is what you imported and A list is also what you imported from the module. And another possibility is to import the entire module under an alternative name. In this case, you'd say import module as what you like that other name to be. A common one would be import pandas as PD, therefore not having to spell it all the way out. If a module has a really long name, some people like to shorten it. 
you would say import mod as, and then you give it a different name. So name it, say my module. So now my module is here and it has a and S. And modules can also be imported from within a function. Let me show you what that looks like. So this last example, create a function. I'll have it name it importer. And inside the function, you could say from mod import printy, and then use printy inside of it. So right now, mod isn't here and printy isn't available. But if you run importer and call that function, it imported printy from the module mod and then called it with the argument, hello, everyone. One note here, if you were to try to use the indiscriminate asterisk sign to try to import everything, it'll let you know that the import asterisk is only allowed at the module level. You can't do it inside of a function. You can have problems if the module is not available to import. Another safer way to do this is to use a try statement with an accept. So what does that look like? You start with try, and let's say this is a non-existent module. And you can see here, the module was not found. Try it one more time. In this case, with an existing module that doesn't have an existent object, say it's missing a particular object that you were looking for, in the accept statement, you could say then, okay, that object was not found inside the module. Therefore, guarding against unsuccessful imports here, so in this case, it looked inside mod and didn't find bar. Next up, you'll check out the dir function. 